not enough attention is paid to the issue of water scarcity because water is, is undervalued. You only miss it when it's not there. Two thirds of the world population is currently facing water scarcity and this, this number is only growing due to climate change. My name is uh, Sid Vollebrecht. I'm the, one of the co-founders and the CEO of Elemental Watermakers. And I'm rethinking the way we can get access to clean water from the sea and the sun using sustainable desalination technology. A long time ago, I went on a, on a surf trip to Madagascar. I met some boys that were carrying water for their families and they couldn't attend schools. And I tasted this water and it was, it was salty. It limits their development, it limits their health and it limits their life expectancy. A couple of hours later I found myself drifting on my surfboard under the abundance of the sun in this vast ocean and that's where I realized that there should be a solution for water scarcity. And that's where uh, the idea originated to start uh, elemental water makers. So desalination uh, as a technology itself, it's nothing new. It's been done since the 50s and 60s, and it was first done in, for example, the Caribbean. But it's uh, a technology that's very energy intensive, and that makes the water uh, expensive. But also because uh, fossil fuels are being used, it also contributes heavily to climate change. So it's only a vicious circle leading to more water scarcity. And those issues, uh, that's what we try to tackle with our innovation of solar desalination. And we're talking about reverse osmosis. It works uh, just like a sieve. So you put a lot of pressure uh, on seawater and then only the H2O particles, they can travel through the small pores in the membrane. All the rest, all the salts, but also all the viruses and bacteria, they cannot go through. So you use uh, pressurized seawater, you get uh, very clean water at the, at the other end. And then you also have saltier seawater coming out that still contains a lot of pressure. And we reuse this pressure to reduce the amount of energy that we need to power this process. And this is the energy recovery technology that we implemented in our innovation. The next step is that we use uh, renewable energy to power this. We can use, for example, solar energy for small projects. We can use wind energy for larger projects. And in the future, we can also use wave energy once it's uh, commercially uh, available on a, on a large scale. And then the, the residue is basically the saltier seawater that is returned to the ocean. Um, because the ocean we, we, we vision as a, a limited resource. So when you talk about desalination, the, the brine flow, the saltier flow is always a, an issue. And by taking out only a small part of the fresh water from the salt water, the salinity of the, the saltier flow, the brine flow, is, uh, has a limited concentration difference. So we dilute basically the impact. Secondly, we also don't use any chemicals in this process. Uh, so the water that comes back is, is just slightly salty seawater. We don't have that much impact uh, when you look at the volume because the projects that we do on average are around 100,000 times uh, smaller than the conventional large-scale desalination projects. So we are talking about the Middle East, uh, the whole Mediterranean region, the whole Caribbean, we're talking about Australia, all these places are relying on desalination technology. It's around 5% of the world population that's now using desalination for their water supplies. And these projects are, for example, for a resort that wants to save on their water expenses, but also for communities that are now forced to, to transport water or drink unsafe uh, brackish groundwater or unsafe uh, polluted water. Uh, so there's a very wide range of applications, uh, industries, private properties, municipalities, uh, all using solar desalination uh, for their water supplies. When it comes to uh, water scarcity, there's plenty of solutions. So there's solutions to use less water, to recycle water, to use wastewater, and also solutions like us to augment your water supplies from the air, from the seawater. So the technology is really out there. It's really uh, a question of, of valuing water. So policy change, that we start paying for the water in the food that we use for the coffee beans that come from India, Chennai, or for the avocados that come from Chile. 
which are both very water scarce regions that export these foods while the population has no access to clean water themselves. So this is about valuing water and I think there's the, the biggest step that we have to take as a, as a society. So relatively we have uh, very high water quality. Would you drink this water as well? Yeah, I would, I would drink the water every day, of course. <laughs> <laughs>